Welcome to Conversations on the Oaks. This podcast is supported by the Dillard University Office of Communications and Marketing. I'm Eddie Francis, your host. New Orleans hosts one of the biggest jazz festivals in the world, and it started as a small event in 1970. Around the same time, some of the biggest names in African-American arts and culture graced the campus of Dillard University for events such as the Afro-American Arts Festival, the Jesse Covington Dent Festival, and productions by the Dillard Players Guild. There are Dillard alumni who argue that those campus events served as a seed for the vibrant festival culture that the world enjoys today when they visit New Orleans. And that story will be told during Black History Month on Dillard's social media platforms. John Kennedy, the former archivist at Dillard University and alumnus of Dillard, and an archivist at Howard University joined us on Conversations on the Oaks to talk about the legacy of those events. The views expressed on Conversations on the Oaks do not necessarily reflect the views of Dillard University or any parties associated with the university. So John, thank you so much for joining us on Conversations on the Oaks. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Eddie. Uh, it's it's always a pleasure and honor to speak about our university's history, and uh, and always as always, thank you for the inclusion on the programming that you guys put on. So the first thing I'm wondering about is the is the kind of event uh, the, the, that Dillard had back then, and uh, the kinds of events that Dillard had become known for. So so tell us about the events that you researched, and and tell us. What made those events so intriguing to people and so fun to people? Well, from the very beginning, uh, when Dillard opened its doors in 1935, it, it, it prioritized phenomenal programming. Uh, Dillard University, uh, from from the when it opened up in the 30s, it was known for these phenomenal art exhibits and the arts in general. You know, then we get uh, the foundation uh uh, of our liberal arts in the 30s with a uh, phenomenal theater program and that's very strong today at the university. Also, uh, that's when you get its very strong music history to uh, to be born uh, with, you know, uh, our concert choir, which still today, uh, arguably it's the most longstanding uh, tradition is the uh, university concert uh, during Christmas, uh, the Christmas concert holiday program, which now is called The Child is Born. Uh, it, its foundations begin as soon as Dillard opened up in 1935, but also throughout the 40s, you see some of the same uh, concentrations in building the arts at the university well into the 50s. Uh, also, in the, in, in the 50s, you get, you get this phenomenal thing uh, to uh, I'm sorry, in the 40s up into the 50s, you get uh, phenomenal events. Uh, it, it also in sports, you get the Turkey Day Classic to be born in 1946. Uh, our longstanding rival Xavier University and us used to have the Turkey Day Classic, which is uh, a f- uh, um, a football game that was played on uh, Thanksgiving uh, Day uh, in the. Uh, and the bone of contention was the trophy that was exta- exchanged. Uh, so, it, well, uh, with each decade, you get these phenomenal programs. That, uh, and definitely in the 50s, we have to talk about uh, the the uh, in, in, in innovation and in innovative thoughts and innovative mind of uh, Miss uh, Jesse Covington Dent, who approached John Johnson uh, to start a fundraising uh, event in and around Flinger Ridge Hospital, which ultimately became the Ebony Fashion Fair that we that we've grown to see. <laughs> well, you know, attached to the organization, uh, this that uh, particular festival was born to expose Black women to the many different fashions of Black women around the world. So this uh, through the creative mind of an innovative mind of Jesse Covington did through it. We get that in the, uh, beginning in the 50s. Uh, within the 60s, we have to talk about the Afro-American uh, Art Festival, um, which was initiated by the Afro-American Students for Progress, um, a, phenom- a phenomenal, often maybe considered radical group at the time of Dillard University students headed by uh, uh, Mr. Dave Dennis, who, who was known throughout the civil rights movement to walk hand in hand with Dr. King and, and the 
like. Uh, and it's through his mind and his innovativeness that we get the Afro-American Arts, uh, I'm sorry, the Afro-American Students for Progress will eventually create the Afro-American Arts Festival, which was meant to expose not only the diversity community, but the African-American community as a whole to everything that is Black <laughs> across the world. And, and that's in thought in the arts uh, of all of all genres, theater, music, poetry, history, everything. Uh, they they sought to to bring blackness to black people, not so, not only on Dilly versus campus, but also the the greater community as well. Um, and definitely within the coming of uh, Dr. Cook, we get the International Arts Festival, which was meant to uh, expose the students. And that's, that's a big thing about our, our innovative minds is Dilly, at, at Dilly throughout the years is that they always wanted to expose the students to everything that was black and everything that was the world. Do you being keeping in mind that they're trying to create world leaders? Uh, uh, you, you get the International Arts Festival in the 70s through Dr. Cook because he wants to expose the students of the wonderful foods that, that are throughout the diaspora. So definitely though, throughout each decade, we get these wonderful festivals. So you had a lot going on back then in terms of the social backdrop uh, that seemed to fuel a lot of these festivals, a lot of these events. Uh, talk a little bit more about what was going on in society and what was going on at Dillard that fueled all of these events. Yes, sir. Well, definitely in the third we Dillard has never been a, a university of coincidence. Uh, it, it came by through great innovation, great intentionality, and great minds, great foresight. And the, that programming is a product of that uh, ideology. Dilly University was formed in the middle of the Great Depression. So, <laughs> so you you get you get this very small African American black university to be born in the middle of a time uh where the economy of the country is just well, I'm sorry, the world is just terrible. <laughs> wow. So you so so it's it's by no coincidence that you you know the university when it opens you you get this 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 fiery uh need this fiery uh intentionality to to create these wonderful things to expose black young black minds to the uh to the wonderful things of the world a uh, people uh, uh, that has always always strive to just have an opportunity so it's 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 not by coincidence that in the 30s you you get uh, the, our very strong art foundation, theater, music. Um, and because, uh, early leadership wanted to make sure that Black students understood the, the beauty that surrounds them in the world, specifically in the arts. Uh, same throughout the 40s. Uh, and, and also an intentionality within the 50s uh, with, with the uh, innovativeness, uh, 40s and 50s, uh, with the uh, uh, innovativeness with the Turkey Day Classic. You know, despite I mean Xavier being a rival of us, they are a fellow a uh, black school, and so so the the incorporation and the and to bring the the community of New Orleans together to 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 experience this. When you speak to people from that time frame, you you, you as compared to nowadays, today in in New Orleans, you uh, you have the Bayou Classic. You know, that's the the big uh, premier of black football in the city. But when you speak to people throughout the 40s and the fit that, that grew up in the 40s and 50s in the city, their very first exposure to black college football is Dillard and Xavier. Mm. And that's that's by no small means. And definitely when we moved to the 60s, we were within uh, you know, the civil rights movement is still with us. Um, black power is uh, that that particular movement is is being fueled by the things that we see in the civil rights movement. So it's by no coincidence that we get the Afro American Arts Festival. It's specifically from that specific student group, the Afro American Students for Progress. Dave Dennis himself is a civil rights activist, and and <laughs> he's in in order in, in the and you see the features within that festival are people that he he met along. His uh his endeavors throughout the movement, 
So it, so you get <laughs> you get these people that he saw upon that on this on, on that working trail throughout the movement to come to campus and, and to uh, and you know to take part in these various things uh, throughout the festival. And and the same with Dr. Cook in the seventies with starting the uh, International Arts Festival. Uh, he, he, understanding that you know we we are in the era where. Uh, black exposure, uh, in, uh, incorporating um, black enlightenment into uh, programming without uh, throughout our universities, our curriculums. Uh, Dr. Cook saw this as an opportunity to introduce them, you know, to another uh, aspect of the diaspora. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I noticed, and by the way, you're listening to uh, conversations on the old Samedi Francis, and we're talking to John Kennedy, former archivist at Dillard University, currently an archivist at Howard University. And John, one of the things uh, that really struck me when I became the uh, communications and marketing director of Dillard is I started running into these Dillard alumni, especially from the late 60s and early 70s. And one of the things that I heard consistently from them is, well, you know, you got this big old jazz and heritage festival right now. Uh, you know, that was kind of inspired by events at Dillard University. So talk about that sentiment that alumni from that era have and why they have that that sentiment. Yes, sir. Uh, Eddie, uh, one thing I've learned uh, throughout my tenure as an archivist at Dillard, as a historian, uh, as a student, is that Oral traditions have a particular weight for particular reasons. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you know, and, and, and that's one thing that's always been big in our people is oral histories. And you know, many people may disregard it as propaganda sometimes, but uh definitely I think we always should take a heed to certain aspects of oral history. Uh if you if you sit down with and, and to, to this particular topic, when uh to this particular question, when if you sit down with the likes of Mr. Dave Dennis or any of his uh, fellows that were uh, 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 members of the Afro-American Students for Progress, they can testify to a time where the, the festival uh, disappeared for a time off campus and then they had to take it off campus. Uh, uh, and in mm. this particular instance, uh, from what I understand is <laughs> when that festival and, and that the last year of the Afro American Arts Festival, of uh, the the people that we are you know, <laughs> uh, that that uh, have that have created the uh, the Jazz Fest now they uh, the year uh, after uh, following the last year of the Arts Festival is um, you get Jazz Fest being born, being that they were in the same space as the students and understood what the students were doing at this particular festival, and they wanted to mimic this. <laughs> so this has always been a, a very strong oral tradition or, or passed down uh, throughout the legacy. I heard it as a student as well. I further understood it as an employee while I was at Dillard, the magnitude of why this uh, oral uh, tradition was passed down, this oral history was passed down about the festival. Um, as, a, as a student, I was always saying, well, you know, Dillard University started Jazz Fest, and I'd be like, Okay, uh, okay, how you know how wondering, you know, being a native of New Orleans and understand trying to understand, uh, just that that's a that's that's a very audacious claim, yeah, uh, for, yeah. for such a small university as well. But then when you learn the magnitude of what the Afro American Arts Festival was, you had every uh major person of every major genre coming to the campus of Dilly University, the, the, everyone within uh, the, the major people in gospel music, um, jazz music, local and national, uh, the, the great uh, history minds of the time, uh, poets of the time. Uh, and also you, you get you get people, you get Dilly University uh, people uh, uh, shooting to fan, uh, fame. Throughout this festival, uh, Miss Margie Joseph, who became a, a renowned uh, a, a jazz singer, um, R and B singer, who who partnered and did songs with the likes of Blue Magic and Donny Hathaway. So you, so these are the type of things that are happening. So, so of course, our alum are going to cling to these special histories because that art, that arts festival, was something very special to be had on the campus. 
Yeah. And I mean, one of the things that people are going to see uh, throughout Black History Month is they're going to see some pictures that may surprise them from uh, those festivals. I mean, we're talking about the likes of Cannonball Adderley, uh, the Staples Singers, um, uh, uh, Leroy, Leroy Jones at some point uh, graced the campus with his presence. And so I was really struck by that, the great Danny Barker, you know, I'm, I'm really struck by some of the people who did appear um, mm -hmm. in the festivals around that time. So let me ask you, sure. um, as an archivist, as a history buff, is there a festival or is there a year of the Afro-American Festival or any other event that you wish you had seen? As the historian in me wants definitely to say immediately the uh, the Afro American Arts Festival sim simply because it is the personification of student empowerment, black empowerment, black mm -hmm. enlightened thought, um, audacious black thought. Uh, the historian in me wants to cling to that festival so much, and it actually is um, arguably my favorite part of our university's history, um, just simply because. It was a student driven, student ran festival. Uh, they had faculty uh, a, a leadership and advisement, uh, particularly from Reverend, uh, giving honor to Reverend um, Robert Polk, who is still living um, and has written about his his dealings and, and is it him being an advisor to the Afro-American Students for Progress, uh, which is, is in our archive at Dillard. Uh, also, you know, just 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 seeing what students, what young people of the time were able to to create. Um, I think oftentimes when we think of great things uh, on the levels of uh, our, our universities, we often uh, quickly cling to at times the faculty, the administration. But uh, one of the be most beautiful things about Dillard's history is that its most special traditions were created by the students and advocated by the students, even if it come that if it didn't come directly from the students, it was advocated by them initially, and the faculty acted acted accordingly. But no, definitely to to be able to be at that initial festival to see Danny Barker, Leroy Jones, and also to, to experience eventually with the following festivals, the birth of Daishiki Theater, which is a which is a very strong. Uh, uh, theater creation within the realm of uh, theater arts, particularly Black theater, um, that being born at that festival. Uh, no, so definitely, definitely the Afro-American Arts Festival, I don't think it's close. I, I wouldn't be able to call myself a historian, I think, if I if I were to pass up on such opportunity. Uh, but also uh, the, the the football player and, and sports lover in me would definitely would have loved to experience Black uh, New Orleans as the epic center, epic center of Black college football for um, that it was during the time of the Turkey Day Classic. Um, oftentimes, those of us who, uh, who, are, who, are, who are from New Orleans nowadays, especially, we have to go experience Black college football elsewhere outside of the city. But to to experience New Orleans as that epicenter of you having Dillard and Xavier with very vibrant football programs. And it, that, that, that's, a, that's another experience in itself. But first and foremost, definitely the Afro-American Arts Festival. You're listening to Conversations on the Oaks. I'm Eddie Francis, and we're talking to John Kennedy. John is the uh, former archivist at Dillard University. He's currently an archivist at Howard University, and he's also a Dillard alum, class of 2010. And, uh, you know, you talk about um, the, the vibrancy of that experience when it came to the Turkey Day Classic, and I can only imagine. I mean, I, I, I had the privilege of meeting people who started their theater journeys at Dillard, you know, Ted Gilliam and and all these types of people who I really had the opportunity to work with when I did things like the Black Theater Festival um, here in New Orleans. And so uh, it was really something to, to meet them and to hear them talk about some of those things. But some people look at this and some people listen to this stuff and they say, well, that's just nostalgia. You know, th those are days gone by. We don't quite have it the same way. You know, the Spring Festival is not the same as as uh, the Afro-American Arts Festival. But why do you think it's important as we're going to recognize these events throughout Black History Month? Why do you think it's important to recognize these events? 
Well, first and foremost, uh, black people have always uh, were considered. Oh, once we escaped uh, bondage, shadow, shadow slavery, we have always been working towards reclaiming our history, and that, and we're always going to be in this uphill battle and reclaiming that history. So we as uh, products of HBCUs, product of, of, of Black history, um, people that are aware of Black, uh, black history, protectors of Black history, we, we owe it to our forebears and also to uh, our future generations to hold tight to these, uh, these, these traditions. Um, uh, these past legacies, the, 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 which is our current legacy, rather. Um, so, uh, but, you know, of course, it's going to be nostalgia to those of us, to those who wouldn't it mean much to. Um, you know, and, and, and unfortunately, that's been said a lot about our history in general is that, you know, Black people like to tell feel good stories, but those very those very uh those very stories may be feel good to us but also at, at the the historical weightness the historical relevancy is 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 is, 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 is very significant so to those who wouldn't cling to it as much as us of course it may sound uh, nostalgia but for so for someone who is a product of Delhi university of, of any university of any portion of black history those things are are important because it, it for one it shows that we we are uh, we are a product of our history, and in and, and understanding that history, it gives us a sense of ownership, particularly in the university setting. To know Dillard's history is to have a sense of ownership for Dillard University, and 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 with that ownership, it gives us a sense of power. I have power within my universe. My university empowers me. My legacy. Uh, in my uni uh, the legacy of my university empowers me. So, so of course, there's going to be feel good stories uh, to other people, maybe uh, nostalgia to some, but to us, these are very sacred to, uh, traditions. And you see that within any culture, um, mm -hmm. you know, they, uh, that may be foreign to to others, but you no, know, to it's it's proper for us to maintain and to preserve these. Uh, these stories, these histories, especially when it comes to these special festivals like the Afro-American Arts Festival, because it is our legacy. And it shows, particularly that particular festival, shows the capability of your students. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, show, yeah. it, show, yeah. it shows what you are uh, at, as, a, as a 17 to 22, 20, 21, 22-year-old are capable of during, the, honestly, some of your most vulnerable moments. When you're still trying to figure out the world, you're trying to figure out your your future, your, your career. Where do you fit in all of this? But in the midst of all that, you're able to create these beautiful things. You're able to reinforce these beautiful things, uh, carry on these beautiful legacies. So no, we owe it to our forebears and our future generations to protect these things. Yeah, you know, as an archivist, I, and I really have to know this. I've, I've had this experience of talking to students, and I can kind of see they 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 stand up a little bit taller when you start to go over history with them. He starts to say, "Listen, you know, you you came from this tradition, and you can continue the tradition." Is it your experience as an archivist um, that when you've had these conversations with students, that they seem to have um, had maybe some sort of inner transformation. Maybe you didn't see it at that moment, but you did see something gradually uh, within mm -hmm. them. Have you have you had that kind of experience with students that you as you've discussed uh, uh, history with them? My good brother, that is honestly, uh, if not the one of the uh, most gratifying uh, aspects of this 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 uh, this position, this capacity is to to uh to convey a part of any history especially when it comes to black history to a student or to someone who doesn't know and and leaving your space they 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 relate to you that i didn't know but now that i'm now that you've told me i know now and you see and you see that that like you said that that change both immediate and gradual like that 
as an archivist, as a historian, as a lover and protector of Black history, that is very meaningful because now you've you've let someone know uh, uh, this particular aspect of history is is a, is a, is an actuality, and now you can embrace it accordingly. You know that's 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 priceless to an archivist, it's priceless to a historian, it's priceless to a lover of HBCU history, Black history. Yes, I have, and and very early on um, within my career as an archivist, when I uh, uh, if if you don't mind, I want to tell this one story. There was a family who came uh, who came to the Delhi University Archive uh, to uh, to reinforce some things that they've heard or orally throughout their family that they had an ancestor that went to New Orleans University, which is the predecessor of Delhi University, which uh, whose records are at Delhi University, uh, uh, student records, um, and they and and to have them come visit me. And to have them sit with me and I was able to show them their ancestor and to see that immediate reaction that everything that they've heard throughout the, their family throughout these years, because the, the family was always trying to get to New Orleans to, to view this, to see if it was an actuality. So to see them and light up and the the mother, she came into tears. She's like, it's true. It's true. And, 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 oh, Thank you so much. You you can't pay for uh for that type of uh gratification and to and you know that that type of experience to to see that you've helped a family help someone uh so much to to just from conveying a, uh, an aspect of history to them or showing that some you know this this particular thing existed. Yeah, you, you you can't pay for that. That's that's honestly, if not the the most gratifying one of the most gratifying things of this capacity. John Kennedy is a former archivist at Delhi University. He's currently an archivist at Howard University. He's a Delhi University alum, class of 2010. John, thank you so much for joining us on Conversations on the Oaks. Welcome back home virtually, by the way. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, as always, uh, my brother, you, you've you always incorporated me in your programming. Uh, you and your department, you know I love you guys so much. You, Ariane, uh, Ms. G., uh, uh, Danielle, uh, Sabri, thank you, uh, and uh, Dad, all of you guys, thank you always for for thinking of me as someone who's worthy for your platform and in in one of the highest regards. Uh, well, this this is always I will always hold speaking about the history as one of the highest regards it, a, a, as a historian. Um, and it's not one of the highest honors I can always uh, ask for. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you to John Kennedy for joining Conversations on the Oaks, coming back home in a way. Follow Dillard's social media channels to see the features throughout Black History Month. Those links are in the show notes. Conversations on the Oaks is brought to you by the Dillard University Office of Communications and Marketing. Subscribe to Conversations on the Oaks, download it, and rate it on your favorite podcast platform. Until next time. I'm Eddie Francis, and thank you for downloading this edition of Conversations on the Oaks.